Well, uh, bienvenidos, welcome uh, 2014, a new year, a new show, and um, we have a, a great pleasure. This is going to be a very, very special show to start 2013. We're going to be talking the whole hour with Dr. Tracy Willen. She's a thought leader of impact of technology and society, war careers, and uh, she's been a scholar at Stanford University and uh, has held uh, high-level positions at Apple, Hewitt Packard, Cisco, and the Apollo Group, among other things. How are you, Dr. Willen? Very good. Happy New Year, Javier. Thank you very much again for your time. And uh, so uh, you've been, uh, you have uh, written, uh, I believe, 11 books, and uh, including the last one, which uh, that's what caught my attention to doing these special shows. And it's how to get a job basically for the next 50 years, right? Like how to be employed in the 21st century. That's right. Uh, the book is uh, coming out this month, which is January. It's called Employed for Life. 21st Century Career Trends, and it's really a look uh, from the perspective of job seekers, job hunters, recruiting managers, hiring managers, and HR executives on what it takes today in the modern world to stay employed for life. Yeah, and uh, this book is about everything. I mean, it's not just about cars. Our show is about cars, but I think uh, everything uh, in the world pretty much goes around cars, right? You have to go to work in a car most most of the time in most cities. Most people drive to work. Uh, so that's what caught my attention, and I think there are like so many topics that we can talk about this, uh, about your book, about your expertise uh, related to cars. For example, uh, high-tech uh, automatic factories, robot managers. I mean, um, technology is, is pretty amazing today in, in every field of, the, of the, the world industry, but in cars especially, I mean, people I think take for granted when they open that door and they press a button and that works, I mean, they think that's, that's, supposed, that's so easy to do, but there's a lot of work behind that, right? Oh, absolutely, and I think you're bringing up a very good point about cars and, and employment, because every industry is touched in some way through global competition, um, technology, and the jobs are changing. And the auto industry is one that has really changed. And you're bringing up a very good point about automated factories. I mean, today, if you look at some of those mega factory videos, which I love, even even the simple car like a Mini Cooper is almost 90% automated so there's robotics there's assembly lines and it's all mechanical operators now in fact i was just looking at that video seeing the only person was someone who was doing inspection final detail on painting so th that industry has really shifted and i think it's important for people to understand how technology is a part of it yeah but uh, as, as as much as the robots are taking over the factories i guess and and there's less people in factories and more robots i mean there's people who are behind the scenes i guess and there there were people developing those uh programs the software and uh, actual robots. So, I mean, that's something that people should start looking at. And, and that's one of the things that I like talking about in this show, not just about the car horsepower, uh, MPG, and all those things, which are, like, cool. But, I mean, try to help the audience and, and look at things. And uh, where can they take advantage of this whole industry? Oh, absolutely. I think the auto industry is in disruption in a positive way. If you think about it, like you said, people expect to get in their car and push a button and it starts. Well, that takes a skilled person, somebody who understands the car and someone who also understands the technology behind the car. And ideally, they can simplify it so people like me can open up a car door, push a button, and start it. But I think you bring up a very interesting point about pushing a button. You know, years ago, it was a key. And just today, through electronic and technology advancements, we push buttons now to do everything in our cars. Yeah. And um, for, for you, uh, I mean, like, Besides your expertise and, and, and author of books and, and, and all, all the things that you do, um, what's your experience in cars? I mean, this is kind of top, off, off topic from the, from the book itself, but it's interesting to see how, how you experience that. How, what, what do you expect in a car nowadays? Well, you know what, Javier, that is a good question, because I was born into a classical world. You know, when I, when I drove cars and learned how to drive a car, it had four wheels, gas, and you changed your own oil. And today, I actually am one of those people who needs to use the push button in the rental car to call the, 
call center because I don't understand the GPS <laughs> or I don't understand some of the new electronics in a car. And I have been amazed at how quickly the electronics have changed. And because I travel a lot, I rent a lot of cars, and each car is extremely different now. It isn't very consistent. So I'm like the average consumer out there who needs a lot of help, and, um, and it happens very quickly. Yeah, and uh, speaking of that, uh, is, is there, I guess, a new need in uh, dealerships and uh, car rental centers and all that for people who are like, I mean, it's difficult to be an expert in every single car. I mean, I, I also drive many different cars, almost one every, one or two every week. And you're right, it's difficult to learn everything that is in there and take advantage of that and be safe and like do all that. So is there also a need for people who, I mean, that's a new career that didn't exist, right? Like how to teach people to use their cars if, if that's the case. Absolutely, I'll tell you a funny story. General Motors wrote an article Uh, about how they had to create a, a call center with people who understood cars and technology because so many people like me and the dealers would call in because the cars had gotten too technical. So there's a whole new opportunity for people who will actually understand the car technology and, and technology and can exa you know really explain it in simple terms for people like me so that we can get up and driving, which is really what we want to do. Yeah, and car manufacturers keep developing of these things, and technology is like chasing them like as higher speed as the cars, I guess. I mean, and therefore now we're in 2014, starting 2014, and they're planning for cars beyond 2020. So I mean, who knows what's gonna be there uh, in in six, seven years? So. Um, How how can can people how do you see people getting into now they're getting to college why should they go to what careers should they choose to be uh, not ahead but at least on pace with that what race uh, technology and, and 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 production day to day you know I I would encourage college students to look at the type of career that they're thinking about so if they say I love cars and then I would explain to them to go out and try to visit car dealerships, service and manufacturing sites, or if you can't visit them, at least try to use your social media like Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter to connect with people who work in the industry and ask them what kind of education and skills did you need to get hired and what, what do you recommend for me? I would also recommend that you go right to the website of the auto manufacturers and dealers and service centers because they now have videos and a lot more information for people looking for jobs to say, here's the programs, here's the college, here's the skills, here's the experience that you need to be able to do this this function in the auto industry. I, you know, I, I think people should have all of be able to read, write, do math, but I think technology is a part of every job, and I encourage students to look at taking one or two computer science courses so they understand the language of technology. Yeah, and uh, you mentioned something that is, uh, it's really important and true. Uh, for example, recently I saw Job posting Ferrari. I mean, like for all the brands, Ferrari looking for people and all different kind of fields: design, engineering, marketing, human resources, and all that. So that, like, yeah, you're right. That uh, social media is a great tool. It just like takes uh, your time and dedication to start looking for what you want. So, yeah, thank you for reminding us of that. And actually, there was another story from an engineer, uh, industrial engineer from Mexico, who is now working uh, for Chrysler in Detroit. And I, I thought she was transferred because now the auto industry is global and uh, Chrysler has positions in, uh, I mean, factories in Mexico. And I just thought that she had just been transferred. And I said, no, I went to the website and, and found the job, applied for it, and I got it. I mean, obviously she had a career and uh, she was a graduate from a university in Mexico. But I mean, that's the way it works now, right? I mean, it's a global world in everything. Absolutely. And who you know uh, is, you know, creates a lot of job opportunities. They say that networking really is, accounts for 75% of the job opportunities, but it's, it's what's different today is you can network in person, but then you can also use social media, LinkedIn, Twitter, and Facebook to actually meet people, and that will help you network to, to jobs that you're looking for. Yeah. Uh, on the topics that, uh, that, that you were so kind to send me before the show, you mentioned something that is called the gray-collar worker. Can you explain it into that, please? 
Absolutely. The gray collar worker is the combination of the blue collar worker with the white collar worker. And actually, I um, must say that the auto industry is, has headed in this direction. And what it means is that you not only need the blue collar skills and the white collar skills, but you also need the technology overlay now. I mean, some of the popular jobs that are the, actually the top jobs that the auto industry is hiring for are all pretty much in engineering, manufacturing engineering, quality engineering, production supervisors, maintenance technicians, product engineering, but also other skills such as buyers, welders, uh, process people. So I think if people look at the industry, if just look at your car and you realize, wow, the car is a combination of the blue collar skills where I needed to know how to change my tire and change my oil, but it's also now very technical. I need to understand GPS and smart security systems, and it really requires a blue collar worker. Yeah. And uh, some of the things, I mean, like, for example, you mentioned buyer. I mean, like, people don't realize, I mean, the seat of a car sometimes can have as much, as many as 300 parts. And uh, the, the car manufacturer, let's say Toyota, doesn't b make all those 300 parts. So they depend on suppliers to, 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 be, to, find, to provide them with that. So these people are the, the ones that have to find all, uh, around the world, basically, right? So it, it requires a lot of uh, still people skills, but also along with the aligned with the, the technology that is uh, available especially with the internet absolutely if, uh, just to that point if you are a buyer or in procurement or in the supply chain part of the business you really need to understand how to run large project teams but also virtual teams to your point you will be dealing with buying parts from all over the world And that takes a sophisticated, skilled person to understand not only the people part, but how can I keep in communication with this person, use some, you know, web communication tools, as well as organize people from a distance. So yeah. it's much more skilled today than in the past. Excellent. So we're talking to Dr. Tracy Woolen, and in the second segment of this special show, we're going to talk about uh, Tesla, uh, different cars, uh, and alternative energy cars, and all that. So don't go away. This is uh, Auto 060. I am Javier Mota.